God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Today, we're going to be talking about the principles of prayer. We're going to look at some scriptures and then we're going to talk about these principles. Then we're going to get right into prayer. So I'm encouraging you to stay tuned and um, enjoy this teaching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I also want to remind you that we have Zoom prayer meeting going on. And this is happening Mondays to Fridays. And this is 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, we are aware that it's early, but you know it's better to get up and pray in the morning and have a wonderful day than to wait and get up at late and then everything has already gone bad in the spirit realm and then you're struggling to cancel the activities of darkness. So I just want to encourage you to join the Zoom meeting. It has been a blessing and I'm sure that you joining in also will be a blessing to pray with us. So let's look at James 5 verse 16. It says, confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that he may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. So the passage above it talks about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availed much. So in this scripture, a man could be effectual fervent and righteous but if you reorganize this word and remove the word effectual it becomes the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much that means that a righteous man could be fervent you know could pray fervent and they are not effectual so if you look at james 5 17 it says elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. So from the passages we read and we can see that prayers has principle. So the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. And by fervent prayer, we mean like concentrated prayer. You know, prayer that is focused where our mind doesn't wander about so if we refuse to learn how to pray fervently um or if we refuse to learn if we refuse to learn to pray fervently we will allow the enemies to have a free run and we don't want that so it is easy for a man of god to stand like in front of a pulpit and stretch forth his hand and pray for an hour and even more and but and the truth is this that god will honor it he will he will begin to things will begin to happen but really and truly, he's not helping us because he's not training us. You know, we need to teach people how to do things. And that includes prayer. You know, we can't just say, let me pray for you and not even teaching them how to pray. And that's why we are doing this series on prayer. Then if you talk about the effectual fervent prayer for righteous man available much, it means that your prayer must be focused and fervent in order to move the hands of the almighty right so there is another problem you know as it it is uh, like the word righteous if 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 you're a righteous christian your protection from god almighty is guaranteed and you know scripture says in isaiah 5, 54 17 that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn because that is really your heritage in the lord and the righteousness is of thee said the lord so that's a scripture that assures us as the righteous people that no weapon that form against us will prosper. So from biblical symbols, there are so many things that the scriptures in the scriptures that are meant for to be pictures for us. But many people are not alert enough to grasp spiritual truth. God always speaks to us by example, because if he decides to talk to us in the language of heaven, a lot of people will end up in confusion. So therefore, if God decides to give us a picture of heaven and, and we are to interpret it our own way, we will discover that both our interpretation and the interpretation of God are totally miles apart. They're separate. So let's look at um, um, 1 Corinthians 2.13. 1 Corinthians 2.13 says, Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teach it comparing spiritual things with spiritual 
So God always give us example to make um, us understand. For example, in the book of Genesis, God used skin to close Adam and Eve. And you could look at this on the surface and then dismiss it with a wave of the hand or anything. But first, it leaves. Um, it was it, it was leaves that was that God was using, and later the skins of animal, and that is how the physical eyes will see it. But the spiritual eyes will see it differently. So our spiritual eyes will see it like this, you know, that animals were slaughtered before skin cloth was obtained. That blood was shed when the animal was slaughtered, and there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Noah's Ark is another example. You might have read the story of, about Noah and dismiss it or just maybe a mere story to you. And you may say it's not a big deal, but really Noah preached to the people, but they never heeded to him. Then the flood came and they all perished except for seven people. So no, it, it, it is much more than that. It is because we don't know the spiritual aspect of the Ark. So right in the Ark of Noah, we can see a picture of the rapture. God will take his own people away to heaven, and after a while, they will come down again. This is a depiction of the Ark of Noah. And just as the percentage of those that entered the Ark was so insignificant compared to the population, same will be for the rapture. You know, it's, it's just sad for the entire population, but comparing to the Ark of Noah, that's really what the rapture will be like. So let's talk about incense. Exodus 36 to 7 says, um, And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of, test of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. So if we look carefully at the word incense, you will find that it has a lot to do with what we have been discussing so even though many people have turned to use it turn you know to use it upside down it can teach you principles of prayer so if you take a note of the passage sweet incense you know the sweet incense every morning where i will meet with thee as what it says yes this is a old testament but every word have a spiritual meaning that shows us how to live a new testament life it shows that God meets with man at the burning of incense. And let's look at Acts chapter 13 too, to kind of support or to help us better understand what I'm saying. So Acts chapter 13 too says, as they, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate Barnabas and Saul for the work thereunto I have called them. So if we take note at this, it says, as they minister to the Lord. Yes, they uh, minister to the Lord and things began to happen. They heard from heaven, which meant that whatever they did in that place brought result. And what, what did they do? Really, they ministered to the Lord. So let's talk about the principles of prayer since that we're getting into that. The first principle is praise and thanksgiving, which the New Testament incense you know, they, they are the New Testament incense. So now what does it mean to minister to the Lord? So the answer could be found in what we have been talking about, which is incense. So these men burnt New Testament incense, which by now we know has something to do with prayer and worship. Let's look at Psalms 141.2. Psalms 141 verse 2 say, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my ha hands as the evening sacrifice. And it is evidence from the passage above that incense is speaking about prayer. It comes from the Hebrew word, which means quota, which means of a fumigation. So that means it evacu evacuates or drive out unwanted occupants. So that's what it means. So therefore, in order for you to pray effectively and worship God in spirit, you must offer the New Testament incense, which in turn will chase out other occupants and when we see these occupants are chased out then we can walk up to god and flow with him all right so you know th there's this thing that we could say that a man is filled with his own devices imagination doctrines and fear and many times we take these problems in our prayers so when we do this we will now see him 
as if you know there is uh, heaven has become a brass so really and truly someone who wants to pray um and is there thinking and worried about other things like maybe their problems in their life their marriages their work their career and everything it's unfortunate because all these things are in the heart and you know it it will then really amount to just self-deception where a person will sit down and say they want to pray and nothing will happen so we must have, first of all fumigate these things out of our minds and call do this fumigation exercise so that um we will be able to pray and there will be no hindrance to our prayers so let us talk about principle number two so principle number two that we're going to be talking about is confirming god's will so confirming god's will is a principle which cannot be shoved aside as this is always a principle that we need to observe we need to always confirm what god's will is before we start even praying and even while we pray Let's turn to Ephesians 5.17. Ephesians 5.17 says, Wherefore, be he not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So don't ask God for too much. You know, just be, find out what, whether, whether what we are asking God for is his will for our life. And you don't need to go to God and start to ask God to make you do some things that, you know, it's not even what the scripture say. You, don't be asking God that, God, can I, um, it's okay for me to have my wife and have somebody else. So, you know, for example, don't be asking God those questions because, um, those are not the will of God, according to scripture and according to even our belief as Christians. Let's look at the third principle. So third principle is identify your needs specifically. So you must identify your needs and be specific. What people, um, want is not what really they need so somebody who is asking god to make him very rich promising to sponsor maybe a charity or anything planning to planning to even sponsor a ministry or even do things really and truly maybe all god want to do is to turn this person life you know upside down and, and and pretty much drain out all those impurities in their life maybe god just want to fumigate all those things out of your life and so that he can be able to help you to see him, see the eyeball of God, like see him eye to eye. And that is what he wants, you know. But really and truly, what we want is not always what God needs for us. So it's important to pray for our needs specifically. Our fourth principle is to meditate on the scriptures. And this principle is to gather scriptures promising what you need and meditate upon them. So the scriptures are the springboard that you need to stand, you know, in order to claim what you need. And there's so many scriptures in the Bible that give you the promises of God that you can claim and pray upon. Then let's look at the fifth principle. The fifth principle is to pray with an expectant heart and faith. And you can look at 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So from this sentence it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So always pray to God with an expectant heart and faith. That is very important. Let's move on to our sixth principle. So we need to present our case systematically before God. So don't be praying like vagabond, one prayer here, one prayer there, all of those nonsense prayers. I mean, sorry to say that, but don't be praying like a vagabond. So what we need to do as a good prayer warrior is that when we take up a prayer point, we should pray to a level of assurance before we move on to the next. And that is critical. You know, on our channel, we give you so many ideas of how to pray, but really and truly, if you can take one of those prayer points that we offer in our prayers and apply it to your situa situation and stay on that prayer and pray it, you will see great results. So Isaiah 41, 21 says, Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason, saith the King of Jacob. 
This means that you should tell the Lord your reasons systematically and without wavering. And if you look at Isaiah 43, 26, it says, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. So that's another scripture that supports what we're saying. The seventh principle is do not be selfish in your prayers. And let's look at James Job 42.10. So Job 42.10 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. And let's look at James 4.3. It says, Ye ask and receive not, because he asks amiss, that he may consume it upon your loss. So we already discussed somewhat this principle in principle number six. But what it's basically saying is that um, you need to just pray. Pray not selfishly, but also pray strategically, systematically, and don't be praying amiss. So that's what this principle is saying. Um, principle number eight now, it talks about we should be serious with our prayer. So it is warfare, you know, and warfare prayers is not a joking matter. And so we want to take talk to the creator of heaven and earth, you know. And so when we talk to the creator of heaven and earth, we need to be at a place where we're not joking. And the Bible said we should come boldly before the throne of grace. And so we have to take not just our prayer bold, but we need to be serious with our prayer. You know, if you're praying you know, as, as a Christian, it's important to prioritize your prayer time and your prayer life above everything. I don't really understand that, you know, some of us as Christian, we want God to answer our prayers, but really we don't even want to get up out of our bed to pray. We don't even want to take a day off from our work and say, let me dedicate this day to fasting and prayer. A lot of people don't want to do that. So we need to be a little more serious. The ninth principle, we need to fast along with our prayer. And we talk about that. Um, you know, prayer is very important to fast and pray. Let's look at the 10th principle. So the 10th principle is do not dictate to God. So we do not dictate to God how we should answer our prayers. We need to let God do his will and do things his way. Because the way of God is perfect. Let's look at John 4. 46 to 53 um maybe you could actually read that on your own but i'll just pick some scripture from it john write it down john 4 46 to 53 and i'll read um so jesus came again into cana of galilee where he made the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at capernaum so when jesus heard that jesus was come out of the when when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except he see signs and wonders, he will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my come down ere my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. As he was now going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then he inquired, He of them, the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the servant seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that time, really and truly, that when he sought the Lord, so that's the scripture that we're talking about. So once the word of God comes forth, you just receive it wholly without any questions. Sometimes a word of knowledge might come for a particular person and the very clever person taps from one overflow and they even claim it faster than the person that it was even meant for. So that's really what that principle is about. Now we're going to look at principle number 11 and it says that your prayer must be persistent. So God delay is not God's denial. And each day brings you closer to the realization of your dreams. If you turn to Deuteronomy 3, 25 to 26, maybe you should write down these scriptures so you can read them after. Deuteronomy 3, 25 to 26, it say, Pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, 
that goodly mountain and Lebanon, but the Lord was wrought with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. So that's principle number 11, which is you must pray or your prayer must be consistent. So now let's look at principle number 12 and principle number 12 is to pray to a level of assurance. So we must pray to a level of assurance. We must pray to this level of assurance and we need to begin to praise God and thank him for answer to his to the, to the prayers that we're praying. So that's the final principle. So now that we have discussed all the principles, I just want to recap them with you just to tell you all the 12 principles and then we're going to go straight into prayer. So the first principle, as we discuss, we need to, principle number one, we need to um, praise and thanks, do praise and thanksgiving, you know, by offering incense as the New Testament and Old Testament. Then the second principle is confirming the will of God. Third principle is identify your needs specifically. Fourth principle is to meditate on the scriptures. The fifth principle is to pray with an expectant heart and faith. Sixth principle is to present your case systematically before God. And the seventh principle, do not be selfish in your prayers. Eighth principle, be serious with your prayers. And the ninth principle is fast along with your prayers. The tenth principle, do not dictate to God. So you never dictate to God. The eleventh principle, you must be persistent with your prayer. And the twelfth and final principle is to pray to a level of assurance. So that's it when it comes down to the principles of prayer. We're just going to pray some prayers right now. As we, as we pray, we pray that the Lord will uphold us. We pray that we'll be able to apply the principles of prayers to our life. And I pray that God will also do great and mighty things in our life and our situations. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to worship the Lord. Let us begin to thank him for his goodness, for his mercy, for his compassion towards us. Begin to thank the God, Lord because he is holy. Father, we thank you and we praise your name because you're holy, you are great, you are mighty. We thank you, O oh God, for the principles of prayer, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, that we will be able from today to apply the principles of prayers to our prayer life in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray at this time, O oh God, that, Lord, you will do a new thing in our life. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for bringing us to a place of prayer lord i pray and i thank you oh god for bringing us to a place of maturity in prayer be thou exalted oh god in the mighty name of jesus lord take absolute control in the name of jesus father lord in any way god that we have sinned against you god we come to you and we ask you for mercy mercy oh god for us lord dictating to you what you need to do or how to answer our prayers Father, have mercy, O oh God, and also God, for anything that we will do to hinder our own prior lives. Father, we come to you and we ask you for mercy. We give you glory because you're faithful, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us begin to pray these prayer points. Every evil bird stealing my blessings fall down and die in the name of Jesus every evil bird stealing my blessings fall down and die in the name of jesus every evil bird stealing my blessings fall down and die in the mighty name of jesus evil birds stealing my blessings fall down and die in jesus name we pray remember when you're praying the prayers you can personalize it you can pray it for your family members or your loved ones so instead of saying stealing mine, you can say my husband or your family or whatever you choose. You can make it tell at the prior point personal to whatever situation you're going to or to whoever you want to intercede for. Let us begin to pray. Let my breakthrough appear and let my failures disappear. In the name of Jesus, let the breakthrough of my family appear and let my and let my failures disappear in the name of Jesus. Father, let the breakthrough of your children appear and let their failures disappear in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let the breakthrough of my family appear and let their failures disappear in the name of Jesus. 
Oh Lord, my God, let my breakthrough appear and let my failure disappear. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the head of every marine power fashioned against me be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the head of every marine power fashioned against me be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the head of every marine power fashioned against me be broken. In the name of Jesus, every head of marine power fashioned against my family be broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every evil trend directing my affairs be reversed. In the name of Jesus, let every evil trend directing my affairs be reversed. In the name of Jesus, let every evil trend directing the affairs of my career be reversed. In the name of Jesus, let every evil trend directing the affair of my marriage be reversed. In the name of Jesus, let every evil trend directing the affairs of my family be reversed. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that every evil trend that is directing the affairs of your life and your destiny be reversed now. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh Lord, uproot evil things from my life. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, uproot evil things from my life. In the name of Jesus, my God, everything that is evil, everything that is unholy, uproot it from my life. In the name of Jesus, Father, uproot every evil thing from my family. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, uproot evil things from the lives of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh Lord, plant good things in my life. In the name of Jesus, my Father, Plant good things in my life by the power in the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, plant good things in my family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, plant good things in my family life in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, plant good things in my marital life in the name of Jesus. Father, plant good things in my life in Jesus' name we pray. I cancel every unconscious negative agreement. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every unconscious negative agreement. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every unconscious negative agreement. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every unconscious negative agreement. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for you and I cancel every unconscious negative agreement over your life, over your family, over your career, over your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, make me your battle axe. In the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to make you his battle axe. The word of God said, thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. So we're going to ask the Lord to make us his battle axe. Oh Lord, make me your battle axe. In the name of Jesus, my God, we pray today. And we ask you, oh God, to make us your battle axe. In the name of Jesus, Father, make us your battle axe by the power in the blood of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, make us your battle axe. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every spiritual weakness in my life receive termination. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual weakness in my life receive termination. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, let every spiritual weakness in my life Receive termination in the name of Jesus. My father, let every spiritual weakness in my life receive termination in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let every spiritual weakness in my life receive termination in Jesus name. We pray. We pray for you that every spiritual weakness in your life will receive termination in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every financial failure in my life receive termination in the name of jesus let every financial failure in my life receive termination in the name of jesus let every financial let every financial weakness in our life receive termination in the name of jesus oh lord let every financial failure in my life and my family receive termination 
in the name of Jesus, I pray for you that every financial failure in your life and your family will receive termination now in Jesus' name. Let every sickness in my life receive termination in the name of Jesus. Every sickness in our life receive termination now in the name of Jesus. Let every sickness in our families receive termination in Jesus' name we pray. Let every architect of problems receive termination in the name of Jesus. Let every architect of problems receive termination in the name of Jesus. Every architect of problems receive termination in Jesus' name we pray. I refuse to reap satanic, any satanic harvest in any area of my life in the name of Jesus. I refuse to reap any satanic harvest in any year of my life in the name of jesus i refuse to reap any satanic harvest in any year of my life in jesus name we pray i paralyze all spiritual wolves working against my life in the name of jesus i paralyze all spiritual wolves working against my career in the name of jesus i paralyze all spiritual wolves working against my marriage in the name of Jesus. I pray for you and I paralyze all, paral all spiritual wolves working against your life and destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. That which hinders me from greatness begin to give way now in the name of Jesus. That which hinders you from greatness begin to give way now in the name of Jesus. I pray for you and your family that that which hinders you from greatness will begin to give way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, let every imprisoned and buried potential come forth now. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, let all my imprisoned and buried potential, let it begin to come forth now. In the name of Jesus, every one of my imprisoned and buried potential, Father, let it come forth now. In Jesus' name we pray. I command all unfriendly helpers in every area of my life to depart. In the name of Jesus, I command all unfriendly helpers in every area of my life to depart now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command all unfriendly helpers in every area of my family members' life to depart now. In Jesus' name we pray. I render null and void the effect of any satanic interaction with satanic agents moving around as men and women. In the name of Jesus, I render null and void the effect of any interaction with satanic agents moving around as men and women. In Jesus' name we pray. I pull down the stronghold of evil strangers in any, every area of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pull down the stronghold of every evil strangers in every area of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Every transaction currently affecting my life negatively be cancelled. In the name of Jesus, any transaction currently affecting my life negatively be cancelled. In the mighty name of Jesus, any transaction currently affecting my life negatively be cancelled. In Jesus' name we pray. I command all the dark works done against me in secret to be exposed and be nullified. In the name of Jesus, I command all the dark works done against my family in secret to be exposed and be nullified. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that every dark works against you and your family that is done in secret, let it be exposed and be nullified. In Jesus' name, I lose myself from any dark spirit. In the name of Jesus, I lose myself and my family from any dark spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you and I lose you and your family from any dark spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. I command all oppressors to retreat and flee in defeat. This moment, in the name of Jesus, I command all oppressors to retreat and flee. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every oppressors over our life and our destiny, I command them to retreat and flee. 
in Jesus name. Let all incantation against me be canceled in the name of Jesus. Every incantation uttered against me and my family be canceled in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that every incantation uttered against you and your family be canceled now. In Jesus' name we pray. I bind the strong man having my goods in his possessions. In the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man having my goods in his possession. In the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man having the goods of my family members in their possession. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you and I bind the strong man having your goods in his possession. In Jesus' name. I break the curse of automatic failure working against my prayer life. In the name of Jesus, I break the curse of automatic failure working against my prayer life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you and I break the curse of automatic failure working against your prayer life. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the anointing to prosper fall mightily upon me now. In the name of Jesus, let the anointing to prosper in our prayer lives, in our ministry, in our finances, in our fin career, in everything concern us. Fall upon us mightily now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every anti-prayer altar fashioned against us be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus, every anti-prayer altar fashioned against our prayer life be destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, every anti-prayer agenda, fashion against our life and our destiny, be paralyzed now. In Jesus' name we pray. I command my destiny to begin to change for better. In the name of Jesus, I command my destiny to begin to change for the better. In the name of Jesus, I command my destiny to begin to change for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. So my brothers and sisters, thank you for joining in. We have talked about the principles of prayers. We have gone through some scriptures and we have just prayed some prayers to help us and to also bless us. And so I just want to encourage you to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget our weekly Zoom meeting. I mean, our daily Zoom meeting, Monday to Friday at 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please come and join. We've been receiving lots of blessing as a result of this prayer line. And so we're encouraging you to come and Zoom. See the channel. You will see all the details there available to access Zoom. If you're unable to locate that video, send us an email at ogodariseministries at gmail.com and we'll be helping you to access the Zoom information. God bless you. We do pray that you have a wonderful day and we pray that your prayer life will take another level. We pray also that you'll be able to apply the principles of prayers to your prayer life. And we pray that when you say, thus say the Lord, because you are praying strategically and you're not praying amiss, the Lord will hear you, the Lord will answer you, and man will bow to the name of Jesus as a result of you and your prayers in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day.